so that it can uh, draw a conclusion on the network activity also. This process in the body is scanning a particular IP object, something of that sort. So this is a thread dispatcher object. Now a uh, list of open files. Then in PID we looked at that list of open files. Again the PID is whole array. Actually the interesting part here is if you can see. Uh, this user has uh, open files of index.dat at two locations, i.e. C5 and local settings. And as well as uh, there is a folder or there is a location called a server, as well as there are a lot of Windows files, we 32 files, which are suspicious and which are actually uh, can give you a lot of information if you dig it further. So open files can lead to a new information and new area of doing analysis. That was, and uh, this particular information is kind of loaded DLLs into the memory. So now we have the source, or we have the suspicious process, right? So if you go and uh, find out all the details which are loaded by this particular DLL, you can find in the lot of uh, origins of new files, as well as you can even uh, when when we captured this icmp.dll, actually this was very interesting. This was vulnerable, this was patched with some malicious code, as well as there are a lot of uh, DLLs other than this were actually identified which was not supposed to be there on this machine altogether. So, uh, DLL information is again uh, will give you wealth of information. As well as the Windows registry. Windows registry, again uh, we are still speaking with the PIU. Here you can see here, there are a lot of uh, lines. Uh, actually, there, there are uh, three things you can do is high scan, or uh, you can do a high dump, which is like a current state of registry. You can dump it out from the memory and do deep down further analysis of what kind of registry entries. Uh, and so, and it has the excitement. So, this uh, makes more uh, interesting when you want to map it to a particular user. Uh, actually, just uh, let me not talk much and I'll just take you to a very interesting video. This particularly uh, video I picked it up from uh, HP Gary, it's a commercial tool for uh, forensic analysis. So, it starts with uh, this particular tool is called like, HP Gary, and there are a lot of capabilities from this tool. So what here uh, they have done is they have actually captured live memory and you can see list of all the processes units here. And what they have is they have a scoring mechanism of the DLS based on the known boots and known back. And uh, they will score actually. Here what they have done is have now a DLL which is suspicious to them and 
This tool has the ability to extract all the DLLs. It can decompile the units. It can give even the furthermore list down of contents of DLL and you can search based on the search strings. You can actually search kind of activities that is coming next now. HP Gary. HP Gary. HP Gary. HP Gary. HP Gary. They have actually a concept called as digital DNA. It's a new term for, uh, actually it's a commercial tool, so they uh, keep on using terminology. So <coughs> what they will do is they will create a digital DNA for any file or any new aspect of uh, uh, digital media or uh, you can say a digital artifact. So they try to create all the DNA. <coughs> now here our uh, content that they have been compiled to DNA and now uh, it's going inside the behavioral part. You can see here the activity of sniffing. Even this tool uh, allows you to actually uh, do a Google search for other files because not every file is known to you. So you can just have a look at uh, what Google says about this. So now this particular uh, is uh, the area of X, X and then uh, for forensic analysis this, this area we need to look at a lot. Because of uh, the nature of search strings which we do, normally uh, the data will be stored in a hex format, and this is kind of very interesting. Area. Is 
in this too. Mm-hmm. The capability is quite a memory leaks. Memory leaks, so you mean to say a memory hole where uh, people can put their codes or a kind of uh, location where uh, can this memory can be used Yes, it has that. It's in the picture? No, there are a couple of modules you have to add. Yes, I'll talk to you. So, uh, one of the interesting parts is network uh, information, which I was talking about. From the data structures, actually, uh, we can reconstruct all the network information. So what kind of information uh, we uh, greatly actually is uh, open sockets, open ports and open TCP Actually, uh, this information, if you retrieve it from data structures, it is very hard for the attacker to find their information. Now, I'm just uh, taking you through an image. In our scenario, actually, uh, this particular section, and this is going to be done, uh, the upper portion is the socket scan, and if you can see here, uh, there is a port which is involved on TCP and this, uh, 6 is the TCP protocol which is very new. And uh, you can see here the PID again is 498, which we were interested in. So we have a socket scan and we have an evidence of network activity with the socket scan which we have done. And uh, this section is actually an open TCP connection. And the interesting portion here is this particular line. Actually, NextStack can, uh, can hide this information, but uh, retrieving this information from the uh, blocks or you can say data structures of the volatile domain can give you uh, interesting information. This is here local address. If you see this local address is different and this particular local address is different. Obviously the destination will be the controller. And the interesting, most interesting part is this PID. It's a 10 digit number. It's a weird number all together. And this uh, gives you a lot of uh, actually you know, leads to find out where this has come from and dig it deep on a network like from the packet captures also you can actually find out what kind of uh, actually traffic which is going on because now you have the search string so when the cap of this particular network packets can give you information on what packets are getting transferred between these because this uh, activity is going on through this machine so there is a specific limit on the number of max processes Right. In many operations, there is a specific number of max process ID or number of processes can be handled. Right. So many. But it cannot be. I know. That's what is the obfuscation. Actually, this particular is a kind of bot activity, wherein this was actually this PID is just to confuse the process ID. Actually, this is not a valid PID. Correct. 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 Correct.